Hi, I'm Randy Pearson, Executive Vice President at Gordon Marketing uh, for Sales and Distribution, and I have with me Paul Bechtel, the manager of our debt elimination programs. And today on this episode of Selling Life and Annuities, we're going to talk about common financial mistakes that most consumers make. So, so Paul, let's dive right in. What are some of those uh, common mistakes that consumers in America make? Well, I, Randy, to be honest, I don't know that we could list them all out here in a short period of time, but we'll try to hit some of the highlights. And I'll tell you where I, where I got the idea from. I was pulling up the internet the other day to Google something, and there was a, uh, a little blurb about uh, Warren Buffett said, 12 mistakes poor people make uh, with their finances, you know, and I always like to kind of lean on the Oracle of Omaha because uh, I figure mm -hmm. a guy's returned 19% a year on average probably knows a thing or two about some finances. One or so. two, yeah. But what I like about Warren Buffett more than anything is I think he's a very common sense approach to uh, helping people improve their finances. Uh, uh, sometimes advice about getting out of debt, which I, obviously I specialize in. And that's one of the things I love about what I do is that we're always putting people in a better position. We're always giving sure. people tidbits of advice that can, they can never go wrong with, right? Mm -hmm. And so... You know, I'm gonna kind of tick down through through some of the things that he he was um, saying, and one of the first things he said I thought that was interesting has nothing to do with what they're spending their money on, but what they're not spending their money on is he said people don't invest in their personal improvement. Okay, so taking courses on finances, understanding how money works, uh, maybe um, you know self help books and and things like that mm -hmm. that are gonna make them better people, better consumers. Um, look to the future more, get out of the kind of instant gratification mindsets and so forth. I think that's a very important thing. Would you agree? Without a doubt. I, I, one of the tenets that I've lived by my entire career uh, and something the gentleman who brought me into the business, you know, in, in my early 20s, always would say is that if you're not constantly trying to push yourself, to stretch yourself, to educate yourself, you're going to get left behind. You're going to get left behind. And, and, and so... Um, one of the most important things that you can do to improve your financial situation is to improve yourself. Yeah. I would agree. So, you know, one, one of the things we have to be aware of too as, as human beings is as, as progression over the years, progression of things like technology and so forth. Would you agree we live in an instant gratification society now? And More so than ever. It seems right? like, you know, technology is improving at the speed of light, right? And, so, and we all, including myself, are a victim of that, yeah. Exactly. And, and so has the marketing that goes around this higher technology and these new products as well. And, and before we know it, we're sucked in, you know, to, to the ultra lifestyle, for example, that we see on a yeah. TV commercial and this image of this nice life that everybody would like to have. But let's just kind of talk about, you know, things that we see people doing, like relying on credit cards too much, for example. Uh, it's mm -hmm. a common uh, mistake people are making nowadays, but, you know, with rising interest rates and all that, you know, what was once a 12.99% credit card is now 20.99%, okay? Yeah. yeah. Somebody's making money on that, aren't they? Yeah, financial suicide, right? Yeah. I mean, if you're paying somebody 20% interest, on your everyday living expenses, I mean, that uh, uh, certainly doesn't bode well for a secure financial future. Right. But things like, uh, you know, e easy stuff that you can cut back on, like e eating out frequently, frequenting uh, pubs and bars, you know, entertainment type, type of stuff. Buying name brand stuff when you could buy an off-brand. For example, if I'm going to go buy a pair of shorts, uh, you know, an off-brand pair of shorts versus, uh, you know, a Ralph Lauren or something, yeah. you know, that's going to look and and nobody's going to know this the difference. Why wouldn't we consider those kind of things? Yeah, and most people nowadays, you look at their closet and it's chock full of clothes that maybe they wore once or twice and they never wear again, right? So why are you going to spend exceedingly high prices for something that you're going to get very little value? You know, it's funny you brought up the eating out thing. I, I you know, so part of this problem is generational as well. One of my adult children were in my home the other day and I was talking to my wife about uh, what we we're going to have for dinner as she was getting ready to leave our adult child. And she said, well, why don't you just door dash something? Because we were struggling with a decision. She said, oh, just door dash something. And I kind of chuckled to myself because that's their solution. I will just door dash something. Well, after you wind up paying the excessive delivery fees and a tip and everything else, oh, my gosh, next thing you know, it's 55 or $60, right? Exactly. I mean... You change those little things in your lifestyle, 
at the end of the day, it can make a huge difference in your long-term financial well-being. Well, and a lot of that is, uh, you know, the advent of dual income households versus, you know, I was raised as a young child in a single income household mm -hmm. uh, with four children and one car and two TVs and all that. And we've just expanded that so much that before you know it, it's gotten out of hand. Of you know, some of the other things, uh, you know, uh, people that have unused gym membership or magazine subscriptions, uh, you know. And the reason I bring this up is now is a great time of the year to have a New Year's resolution to tighten your finances up. Yeah. Whether you're a consumer or an advisor out there sure. that is talking to um, to their clients, uh, it's a great time to take stock of that. And with a little bit of this here and there, we can add up to several hundred dollars per month that we can put in people's pocket and redirect to their advantage versus... Um, all, all those products and services and banking fees and mm -hmm. all that that are going yeah. out the door to benefit somebody else. Yeah, without a doubt. You know, when, when I was in the business in my early years, we, I used to talk to people about uh, that uh, the common denominator that I found with most of the folks that I worked with uh, in a selling capacity, um, whether they were making a lot of money or a little money, most of them at the end of the month still didn't have anything left, right? right. Didn't matter whether they're making 10 grand a month or they're making two grand a month. At the end of the month, they had nothing. And so one of the key things that they must do is certainly find those economies, find those items that they can that they can save money. But the most important thing is to pay themselves first, right? Correct. Make sure you're putting money in a good cash value life insurance product or other financial tools so that you're socking away money for you first and foremost, because at the end of the month you're still gonna have nothing left, <clears throat> but at least you knew you, you know you took care of of yourself first. Correct. Well, you know, the the bottom line is you're hitting a nail on the head as far as debt is not a function of income as much as it's a function of lifestyle, right? Absolutely. There's this law called Parkinson's Law, which says luxuries once experienced become necessities, right? Mm -hmm. People don't drive cars without air conditioning or power windows now, or very few right. people don't have a cell phone nowadays and, and, and so forth. And it can get out of hand real quick. Yeah. The beauty of Equity Excel, Randy, is that we can take and look at some simple financial information that people provide, find inefficiencies in our economy, redirect those dollars where now they're they're paying themselves, as you say, earning interest on their money before they give it away, getting them out of debt, freeing up their cash flow, and building liquid wealth that yeah. they don't have to be 59 and a half to use. Yeah, bringing immense value to the consumer, right? I mean, those types of... It's not about a transaction. So, so oftentimes in the insurance business, it's about, for the advisor or the agent, making the sale. With Equity XL, our debt elimination process and software, it's not just about making a sale. It's about helping that consumer change their lifestyle and at some point in time, uh, get out of debt, right? That, having that light at the end of the tunnel, I Correct. think, is such an amazing story to tell that you know finding folks to work with should be you know, easy is taking a look around you. <laughs> exactly right. It's not an either or, it's an and. We're Absolutely. just adding one little financial tool to their uh, economy that yeah. um, uh, solves a whole lot of problems. So we're running out of time uh, for this episode of Selling Life in the News, Paul. But for we, 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 I think we maybe wet the whistle of some agents out there that may be watching this video about Equity XL. If an agent wanted to learn more about the software tool and how to get involved and how to take their life insurance sales to the next level, how might they do that? Well, contact me at paulgordonmarketing.com or give my give me a call on my cell phone. I'd love to hear from you. 24-7-317-626-3054. Love to send you a little bit of information, a sample report. Uh, I'll give you a sample fact finder to be able to go out, <clears throat> find somebody that's got debt, wants to get rid of it, bring it to us. We'll show you how to get started. Hey, maybe start with yourself. I bet you most agents watching this video have some debt that you might want to get rid of. But... Hey, listen, Paul's an expert in that space. Reach out to him. He'll help you transition into an area of financial services that could be very, very transformative. But for now, we've run out of time. So thank you so much for watching this episode of Selling Life in a New Year. Make sure you click uh, subscribe at the bottom of this video so that every time we come out with some new content, you're going to be sure to be notified. But thanks for watching. Happy selling.